whether you're building a prototype, an MVP, or you're building on top of a legacy um, project, a, an important thing to consider is the technical debt that you will incur as you cut corners and you do what needs to be done to get your product out on time. This technical debt is the result of all of those corners being cut, all of the kind of uh, cutting cost in different areas, whether it's on development, on, on design, or on QA. And so what we're going to talk about today is how you can um, avoid a lot of the pitfalls that we're seeing coming through the door at Arcanium. A lot of the founders we talk to hitting those same problems where suddenly their feature velocity drops to zero and they're like, maybe we should just rebuild the whole app because things are moving so slow. So let's not fall into that trap. So this video is all about helping you avoid those pitfalls and build a product that will have high feature velocity so that you'll be able to adapt to the market and meet the demand of your users at a pace that outpaces the competition and builds a better business. Let's get into it. Arcanium. Welcome to a production by Dr. Miles Aaron, CEO and co-founder at Arcanium Ventures. Don't forget to subscribe. 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 Okay, so there are a lot of pieces to the quality question and really quality and technical debt kind of go in the same conversation because um, you're always going to want to push things faster. We can't convince founders, I can't convince you to uh, put the brakes on necessarily and move at a pace that's slower so that you will ultimately achieve better feature velocity. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos is famous for saying, although I know he copped the phrase, I, I think from the military, um, where he said, uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That is basically what we're talking about here. If you're willing to go a little slower and put the right processes in place, you're actually moving faster because things are gonna be easier to do. People are gonna understand what to do. The code's gonna be clear. The number of questions come down and the number of problems goes down precipitously. But knowing that most founders are gonna hear that and be like, yeah, but that's not me. I have to get this feature out tomorrow or I'm dead in the water. All right, I get it. So we're gonna talk about how you can avoid those pitfalls um, starting now. So phase one, there's, there's many things we have to cover to, to really talk about this, but the first thing, phase one, um, what are the issues today that your users are encountering that are causing problems? I'd like those to be fixed before we really get into fixing the tech debt side and putting an investment or a little push toward just making sure your product is looking good on the front end is going to have a great impact. People are going to take you more seriously. They're going to see that your business is legitimate. Um, we see even big companies having issues with broken forms or broken pages or things not working on every device. Um, but there's no real excuse for that if you have basic QA in place. And so the first phase is QA. QA is a very deep topic. We're not gonna go into it here. Maybe we'll do a whole video on it sometime. Um, but the basic of it is can you get someone to run through your entire application top to bottom and identify any user interface issues, any UI issues, are, are all the, are all the um, fonts being followed from the style guide? Are, is the brand being used correctly? Are the colors the correct colors? Um, is the padding uniform in the way that it should be for your application? Does every button click work, et cetera? Now look, if you're doing this from the beginning, you don't have to do a whole app sweep because you've already got it covered. But for many companies that we're meeting out there, um, this is something that you basically need to do an audit and see what is the damage and what are my users seeing that maybe I wasn't even aware of that could be causing them to drop off before they buy or um, to, to look at a competitor as, as, as a better option who looks more legitimate or more professional. Um, so once you get in the rhythm of, of, of doing QA though, it should become part of your release process. You should have um, a QA professional uh, who's going to cost way less than the developer time it costs when they when something gets built incorrectly. It's going to actually save you money pretty much right away. Um, you should have that QA professional look through every ticket that comes through. And if the ticket says, hey, we're adding a button to the app to do this, that person should have acceptance criteria in the ticket that says, uh, basically user stories, that says the, the, this button should do that. Um, and it should match the brand guide and the style guide. And so now that person uh, will, will um, look at the feature in staging 
and they will block it from going through if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and if it doesn't match the style guide. Now I've been using the word style guide here and there. Um, if you don't have a style guide, that is a really low hanging fruit that you should get together. Uh, you'd be shocked at how many large companies that we've talked to that don't have a brand guide, don't have a style guide, they're using different colors on different pages. Um, so this is basically a document that says, here's our typography rules, here's our brand rules, here's how you use our logo. When we have a border radius, it's gonna be um, nine pixels. When we have a padding around a button, it's always gonna be you know, 12 pixels or whatever. It's gonna give some rules and that alone makes the conversation between creative and design and technology already so much more smooth. Cause just like, all right, here's the design, follow the style guide. And I think many companies think they can get away with just passing on a Figma or a design file. The problem is that that doesn't really address responsive design and a web designer or an application developer is going to receive that and go to develop it and say, all right, well, Figma shows it like this, but when the monitor is like that, it's gonna change a little bit, or you know, Figma's always in pixels, but we're using VH or VW units or percentage units. Um, so it's really critical that you do have a style guide that an intelligent developer can look at and understand how to make those judgment calls to align with the style and with the brand, even if the Figma's not giving them all of the information they need. Video production by Brian Harris. Music by Young Logos and Otis McDonald. Sponsored by Arcanium.